Hello everyone and welcome to Online Safety with Mr. Knowlton. My name is Mr. Knowlton. I am the computing lead at Demish Road Primary School and this video is about Instagram. First, let's talk about what Instagram is. Instagram is a social media website and app similar to that of Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they all came out roughly similar times to each other. Um, Instagram is a little bit different though, whereas Facebook is uh, more on sharing what's happened during your day. Twitter is more about sharing your thoughts. Uh, Instagram is primarily about sharing pictures and video content, um, usually about what's happening in your life or if there's anything that you find interesting. Some people like to share their hobbies. Uh, Instagram actually has quite a large celebrity and influencer presence on, on their app. Um, and we'll go over what an influencer is if you've not seen my YouTube video already. So out of all the social media platforms, um, I would say personally that Instagram has quite a wide, the widest range of content. And some of the uh, content on there is quite inappropriate for especially young children. Um, so they need to be very careful when they're navigating on Instagram or if they're seeing something on Instagram, that they don't accidentally stumble on something which is quite inappropriate. And like I said, it's got quite a large range of content. So you could easily be looking at something which is about cartoons or something that the child is interested in. And then one click of a button later, they could be on something completely different. So to make an Instagram account, the uh, website asks that the person that makes the account be at least 13 years old. Now, with all these websites, uh, there is no actual way of verifying a person's age. So it's quite easy to make a fake account. Um, there was a recent study that, that said that 40% of 11 year olds actually have a social media account and that by the time they get to about 13 to 15, it goes up to about 70% of children uh, have a social media presence. So it's very good, it's very important that you're aware of what your children are actually doing online. So when you go on Instagram, this is what the page looks like. So you have got uh, followers, so this is someone's account, this is just a random account that I found. Um, you've got follower numbers. So it tells you how many people you're following, how many people are following you, how many posts you've sent. This is similar to Facebook and Twitter. Um, and then you've got information about the account. You've got an address or a website that links with it. But then, as you can see, this is the main part of the profile, like I said earlier. This is your images and video part. And anyone can see this if your account is public. So once you click on the picture, this is what comes up. So you've got a person's account and you've got the picture. But then similar to other social media feeds, you've got a like button, you've got a messaging button, you've got a direct messaging button, and then you've got things like being able to favorite the post. And then underneath, you've got a piece of information about the post, and then you can obviously write comments similar to Facebook and Twitter. Now, if none of the, if none of the um, settings are set, you can comment freely on anyone's post that you want. You can change the setting where it's just the people are following or you can like on Facebook, you can say no comments whatsoever. So one of the things you need to be careful of on Instagram is when an account is made, it is automatically set to public, which means that anybody from anywhere can see your account and see what you're posting and who's commenting and so on. So the first thing I recommend that you, that you do if your child does have an Instagram account is that they set it to private because that means that nobody can comment and no one can follow without permission. So there are three main ways to communicate on Instagram. You can direct message somebody, so that's sending from one account to another. You can comment on someone's pages and uh, pictures and videos, and then you can also um, communicate through their pictures and videos themselves. Um, dem one of the Instagram uses is showing your life, so that is a form of communication. So one of the important things to talk to your children about is the amount of screen time. In this modern world, it is becoming increasingly difficult to avoid screens. Um, so it's an important conversation to have with your children about what's an appropriate amount of screen time within a day. Now, the thing to remember about all social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, is that they're designed to get you to continuously be on them. They're designed to engage you in scrolling through something until you find something that's interesting. It might not seem that when you're scrolling through uh, these websites, but they are designed to kind of keep you engaged for as long as possible. So maybe have a conversation with your child about how websites are designed to do this. And that's important that like sometimes they take a break or they put their phones down. Now, one troubling thing to uh, link with Instagram is a survey was done last year on web websites and apps that have an effect on child young people's mental health. And Instagram was found to be one of the worst and most damaging to a child's mental health. Now, there is a few reasons for this. 
Um, one of the things is that it develops an unrealistic expectation of the children themselves, whether this is from the filters that make people look better or worse than they are, um, and then children want to kind of replicate that and they get disappointed when they don't look as nice as maybe someone else or a celebrity or an influencer, even though they're just using a filter. Um, or when they're trying to replicate an influence on themselves, trying to gain those followers, gain those likes, gain those comments, and they're not reaching that same level. Or it's through this idea of trying to make content that they think will be liked or think will be shared by lots of people, but then end up not, they end up the opposite happening, receiving lots of negative comments. So children's self-esteem is heavily linked to their social presence and having a conversation about um, their their idea of their own self-esteem and that a lot of these influencers and a lot of these people who post on these things are maybe using filters or using other ways to garner attention and then not to apply that same logic to themselves. Now, if you've not watched my YouTube video, influencer is a potent word on both uh, YouTube and Instagram. So an influencer is somebody who has got a large following on either website and is able to change or alter or... Uh, it's just very popular on these platforms and the uh, Instagram is one of the prime ways, uh, prime websites that is full of influencers. Um, influencers actually themselves earn money through their adverts, through their pictures that they might be sharing, through their popularity. Um, and it, it's quite often that children want to replicate these influencers and try to mimic and copy the kind of things that they're doing on their uh, accounts. Uh, it's important to talk to your children about the fact that these influencers are paid they're supposed to hashtag when they've been doing something for an advertisement or they're doing it as a sponsor, uh, but that's not always the case. Very quickly, I want to talk about hashtag. Hashtag is something that's on Twitter and both Instagram. It's a way of uh, linking together pictures or videos or profiles that all have a similar theme. So for instance, you could do something like hashtag Disney, and then you can click on that hashtag and it'll bring up lots of other things that have the same hashtag on it. Now this is all well and good if you're trying to find things of similar interest or something that you might find that you want to look at. But similarly, because of some hashtags popularity, some people have used these hashtags to then link inappropriate content. So again, please just talk to your children and please just keep an eye on what your children are doing and they're not accidentally clicking on one of these hashtags and finding something they're not supposed to. So one thing that you're able to do on Instagram is something called live streaming. Live streaming is something that's become popular through YouTube, on Facebook, and through a website called Twitch. But you can also do it on Instagram. So live streaming is where you show exactly what you're doing at the moment, whether it is you're making some sort of video, or just showing what you're up to, or showing some sort of trick that you're doing. But you can actually live stream directly from Instagram. So this is something that you need to be careful of with your children that are not live streaming or if they are live streaming that you're knowing about it because it's very easy for a child to accidentally show some personal information or maybe do something they could regret later on. So another feature that's similar to live streaming is called Instagram TV, IGTV. Um, it's where the children can make their own channel. Channel? It's not really like a TV show, but it's similar where you can post longer videos um, and you can, and obviously the influencers or the celebrities might have their own channels that are going on. Uh, the thing mainly to watch out for this is that they're not becoming obsessed and having too much screen time just watching these long videos over and over and over again. So one big thing to be careful of with Instagram, because it is primarily a picture and video sharing platform, is that um, if your profile is set to public and anyone can see it, it also does allow people to take or share your pictures. So if your account is set to public, anyone can share your profile or your picture with anyone else. But even if it's set to private, you, there are other ways apart from sharing through the app that someone can take or steal your picture. There are plenty of apps or programs that you can take or remove images from other social media platforms. And these then can be used, they can be saved or they can be uh, used to make fake profiles themselves for other reasons. So you need to, be, need to talk to your children about making sure that they're aware of what they're posting and the fact that this can actually be seen and taken by other people, including strangers. So the big thing, again, with also social media platforms is the element of running into inappropriate comments. Um, this is something that children uh, do need to have a conversation about, and they do need to understand that it's okay if they do see these kind of things, but to speak to the right people or reporting them or dealing with it in the appropriate way. So Instagram has a filter 
that is supposed to take out negative comments, but this is automatically done by a program. So obviously if you come across any inappropriate content or comments, it's important that these are reported to help that program do its job. And again, if anyone sends anything that's inappropriate, it is the best response to block them and straight away after you've reported them. And then I just wanted to end my video on some Mr. Knowlton top tips for Instagram. So number one, uh, please talk to your children about what they are posting on Instagram and just checking their accounts regularly to make sure that you are happy with their social media presence. It's really important that in this modern era of technology that children are aware of the impact that posting stuff can have maybe on them or other people. Um, the other one is to be careful of personal information. Again, because this is a picture and video sharing app, it's, the children need to be careful that they're not sharing anything that is personal. So whether that's a certain item of clothing that has an emblem on it or showing a part of their street or their address, a phone number, their own name, anything at all that can link them back to that person. And that's the same when it goes on their account information, not sharing anything on there that is personal. Please make sure that you set your child's account to private, making sure that random people can't add or speak to them, turning off location sharing and making sure that the share function is also turned off. And lastly, just talk to your children about setting a screen time limit. Again, like I said earlier, this in this modern world of te modern era of technology, it's very difficult already to avoid screens. But it's really important for both mental and physical health that screen time is limited as best we can. Thank you for listening. If you need anything at all, please email the school. I'm always happy to answer any questions. And thank you for listening.